Hello everyone. We hope you have enjoyed making and playing with this wonderful pen stand, a lovely demonstration of magnetic levitation in the vertical axis. Let's take a quick look at how it is made and how it works. The ring magnets are placed such that the opposite poles face each other. Since the top magnet attracts the one on the pen, it applies a force on the pen in the upward direction. There's a specific range where the magnetic attraction balances the weight, which is the gravitational pull of the pen, and hence the pen levitates. Well, not exactly levitates, which means the pen hangs in the air, but the pen balances just by the tip touching a surface. If we pull the pen away, gravity will dominate and make the pen fall. If we push the pen up, the magnetic force will overpower and the pen will go up and get stuck to the top magnet. It's also worth noting the important role friction plays to make this toy work. How friction between the pen tip and the CD base is what allows the pen to be tilted a little bit and still not fall. And how, therefore, the friction between these contact points is also what determines how long the pen keeps spinning once you give it a twirl. You should have observed that the pen spins longer on the CT surface than the wooden or cardboard surface because the friction is less when the surface is smooth. Whereas the pen should be able to tilt more when you use a rougher surface as the base rather than the CD. As suggested above and in your guide, this model allows you to attempt all sorts of variations. You can use different bases. You can use a pencil instead of a pen. You can add weight to the pen. You can attach a fan or a turbine to the top of the pen or make the fan a Newton disc while it spins. We hope you have delved further and tried to make some, if not all, the suggested variations. And if you have come up with any of your own, we would be happy to hear from you about them. This wonderful pen stand allows you to make measurements and experiment various features of its functioning as suggested in the guide. We hope you take some time to conduct these experiments. For example, how long does the pen keep spinning? What is the maximum angle to which you can tilt the pen before it falls? Is it different for different bases? What's the minimum distance between the magnets before they stick to each other and the maximum distance before the pen falls? What happens when you add more magnets, etc, etc. Playing with the variations and conducting these experiments will already start opening your mind as to how magnets work, what role friction plays in the functioning of this model, and how forces are constantly stabilizing each other in our everyday life to create an equilibrium. Magnets are among the most fascinating things in nature. They are fun to play with and play an important role in our day-to-day -day lives. Sometimes obvious, sometimes hidden, Magnetism also happens to be one of the major reasons the Earth has life. It's one of those topics that is fun for people of all ages and is also one of the most complicated scientific phenomena in the universe, which has intrigued scientists since ancient times. Being one of the most interesting topics, there are multiple stories and anecdotes about magnets, magnetism and its close cousin, electricity. The history of magnets is fascinating. Legend has it that a Cretan shepherd named Magnus was herding his sheep in an area of northern Greece called Magnesia, way back around 4000 BC. Suddenly his shepherding stick and nails on his boots got stuck to a particular rock. It is suggested that this rock must have been what we call magnetite today, an iron oxide which is magnetic. Magnets therefore got their name from this region of Greece or Magnus himself. The Greeks, Chinese and many others started studying this magnetite or lodestones as they were called. However, it was only 400 years ago that William Gilbert, an English astronomer, studied magnetism more scientifically and discovered that the Earth has a magnetic field. In the subsequent two centuries, the Danish physicist Hans Christian Ørsted, Englishman Michael Faraday and finally James Clerk Maxwell of Scotland formalize the properties and equations of magnets, magnetism, and electromagnetism, and pave the way for modern society and the industrial age. Oersted discovered that a moving charged particle, for example an electron or proton, produces a magnetic field. 
Faraday observed the converse that a moving magnet produces an electric field. In other words, if you can move a magnet, you can produce electricity. This is how almost all the electricity, apart from that produced in batteries and solar power, in the world is produced today. Whether it be thermal power or nuclear power or wind power, the energy produced via those means are used to rotate massive turbines which have magnets and once these magnets move, electricity is produced. That's how revolutionary the discovery of magnets followed by electromagnetism was. The earth has a magnetic field. This is because at the core of the earth, there's molten iron and nickel, both magnetic metals. And since the earth rotates west to east, its magnetic field is orientated approximately north-south. The core of the earth is nothing but a giant molten magnet. So using a compass, seafarers have always been able to tell which direction is north and which south. Equally significant has been the role the earth's magnetic field has played in making this a habitable planet. Our sun produces a stream of high energy particles which get amplified during solar storms. These also head towards the earth, but our magnetic field ensures that these harmful high energy particles stream along the magnetic field lines towards the poles and interact with our ionosphere to produce a spectacular light show in the heavens called aurorae. Without a magnetic field, they would have hit the earth directly and all of us would have been exposed to harmful radiation and perhaps wouldn't have existed at all. One of the many reasons that Mars perhaps never has or will harbor life, it doesn't have a magnetic field. Mars and Venus are the only two planets without a magnetic field in our solar system. Saturn has one of the strongest magnetic fields and there have been some fascinating pictures by the space telescope Cassini Huygens of aurora occurring on Saturn's poles. The Sun also has an extremely strong magnetic field and it is the twisting and turning of this field that results in occasional and periodic bursts of energy known as solar flares which produce an extra surge of high energy particles headed in all directions including towards Earth. So lucky that we have a magnetic field. When James Clerk Maxwell formalized his famous equations in the 1860s, four landmark equations that are simply called Maxwell's equations, in a single stroke he succeeded in uniting the theories of classical electromagnetism, optics, and electric circuits. This was one of the greatest breakthroughs and achievements in all of physics. It helped us explain how all light propagates, from gamma rays to the longest wavelength radio waves, we refer to the entire spectrum of light as the electromagnetic spectrum because Maxwell through his equations proved that light is nothing but the propagation of electric and magnetic waves thereby called electromagnetic waves. Today our entire communication networks rely on sending information via these waves through cables in space via satellites etc. We live in a very magnetic and electric universe. <laughs>